Well, following the absolutely horrendous assassination of former Japanese PM Shinzo Abe, here's what my dear friend, former National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien tweeted. I will quote, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe originated the term free and open Indo-Pacific. He was a towering figure in his land, a great Japanese patriot, and a true friend to the USA. His assassination is a serious blow to the free world. Condolences to his family and to Japan. Uh, requi wait, if I get this right. Requiescat in pace, Abe-san. I think that's Latin for rest in peace. Here to talk about his legacy is my good friend uh, Robert O'Brien. Robert, you heard this. What did you did you hear this from the Japanese Foreign Ministry uh, last night or at some point, and then you turned around and called our former boss Donald Trump? Is that how this worked? So, so I had heard from uh, from my staff, uh, Larry, that uh, the the assassination attempt had, had taken place. It was unclear whether the Prime Minister would survive or not at that time. I called the Japanese NSA, the former NSA, Shigoro Kitamura-san, who was a very close colleague of mine. He was actually walking into the hospital as I called him. Uh, mm -hmm. I extended the, uh, you know, our, our best wishes for a speedy recovery. And then I called President Trump uh, late in the evening, uh, his time. And uh, we had a, a talk about uh, Pre Prime Minister Abe. I then went back to the, the Japanese and, and extended the presence uh, uh, best wishes and and uh, and hope for a speedy recovery. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. Uh, the president, uh, President Trump, just called a few minutes ago and and said this is a very sad day for the world. And and I agree with him. You know, Robert, uh, President called me earlier today on another matter, but right away we got to talking about Abe, and he went on about how much he liked him, respected him. How, how loyal Abe was as a friend and to the United States, how we did great deals with, uh, with Japan. Uh, and I myself, I just riffed a little bit at the top of the show. Abe was wonderful to me personally. And I, I'm pretty sure you were in the UN meeting when he gave that 50-page uh, slide chart to show J Japan built more uh, cars in the United States than most of our U.S. car makers built in the United States. Just thought I'd lay that on you. Well, Prime Minister Abe believed in a strong Japan, but he also understood that a strong America was critical to peace in the Indo-Pacific. And he, he coined the term Indo a free and open Indo-Pacific as a pushback against the communist Chinese that have a very different view of, of how the Indo-Pacific should run and how the world should run. And, and he understood that a strong America was good for Japan. And, and so he was different than many of our other allies that uh, would, would sometimes harp on the U.S. And, and try and undermine our initiatives. Prime Minister Abe was always there. He, you know, I, I can tell you he was the closest uh, uh, foreign head of state to President Trump. The two of them got along very well. They saw eye to eye on the challenges that we faced as, as countries. President Trump w was happy to have a strong Japan uh, at our side in the Indo-Pacific region. And, and Abe was, uh, was happy to see a strong America. So they really saw eye to eye, but they also had a, lot, a strong personal uh, bond. Uh, they, they bonded over golf and, uh, and, and family, and, and they, they got along very, very well. So it was a very special relationship uh, for, for the president and the prime minister, but also it was a high watermark between, for the relationship between the United States and Japan. Yeah, actually, the prime minister loved to play 54 holes of golf. Loved that in one day. Love doing that, which is uh, very cool. Uh, I think we have a, on the full screen, it's a shot of um, negotiations at the G7 over a communique at the G7 meeting in uh, Charlevoix, which is north of Quebec on the St. Lawrence. Uh, you can see Prime Minister Abe. Um, you can see Chancellor Merkel. You can see President Trump. And you see that guy in the glasses sort of bent over with the pencil. Uh, mediating a dispute over the communique. Uh, right to my left uh, is Justin Trudeau. I don't see Macron, uh, but he was right there. And, uh, of course, there's uh, former Chancellor Merkel. Um, I wouldn't say that was the happiest G7, Robert. That's probably because you weren't there anyway, but I don't want to go down that road. <laughs> the point is, correct me if I'm wrong, in national security terms, uh, Prime Minister Abe made Japan more powerful, did he not? And did so uh, with the full intent of um, 
neutralizing China. Well, he began to rebuild the, the Japanese military and, and air force and navy, and uh, and was a strong not not just military partner, but but diplomatic partner with the United States. And so together, Japan and the United States pre presented a very strong uh, front uh, against the communists uh, in China. You know, he he left office. He had some health issues, and and he left office. And there was always and I had heard this is what makes it so sad that he, he was doing very very well with a, a new uh, medical regime. He was out playing golf. He was speaking on behalf of candidates. And, and as soon as I heard the news that he that he passed, my my thoughts, Larry, went to a, a eulogy that Winston Churchill gave for Lawrence of Arabia. And again, Lawrence had been out of the game for some time uh, when he died. But Churchill said, "While Lawrence lived, one always felt." I certainly felt it strongly that some overpowering need would draw him from the modest path he chose to tread and set him once again in full action at the center of memorable events. And, it, and of course, it was not to be for Lawrence, and it's not going to be now for, for Abe. But he was such a towering figure. He was so strong. He was, he was such a proponent of freedom. Uh, he was such a proponent of the Japanese-U.S. relationship that I always felt, and I think President Trump felt this way, and you and others who knew him, that, that if events got tough and, and we had a crisis or a challenge in the Indo-Pacific, that we could reach back out and Abe would, would re-emerge onto the scene in, in whatever capacity uh, to help lead the free world and, and, and protect uh, the U.S. and its allies. And, and so we've really lost a, a true friend with, with Prime Minister Abe. Couldn't agree more, Robert. You know, I won't name names, but you know him. You know him better than I know him. A lot of heads of state of the big countries loved to nitpick at the United States. Yeah and its leader, loved to ankle bite us to death. Abe was four square behind us, loyal, four square behind us, and our anchor in the uh, Indo-Pacific area. And I hope you're going to say, I got uh, 25 seconds or so, that that um, whole thing, the uh, Indo-Pacific uh, area will remain? Is that, that construct will remain in your judgment? I, I believe it will. That was that was Prime Minister Abe's. Uh, you know, co he coined that phrase. We made it the title of our Indo-Pacific strategy. And and you know, I'll, I'll give the uh, the Biden folks some credit here. They they've kept it in place. And Prime Minister Kashida, the new Prime Minister, who was a uh, who is someone that Prime Minister Abe mentored. Uh, Prime Minister Kashida, I think, has a very strong belief in a strong Japan and and a, and, a, and a, a very very close relationship with the United States. So I I think Prime Minister Abe's legacy is gonna will will, will live. Uh, beyond his time here, and, uh, and, and his impact will be felt for many, many years into the future. All right. Uh, National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien, thank you, sir.